everybody. Thank you for tuning in to a special episode of Friends Talking Nerdy. This is Tim Jowsma, and we welcome you to Friends Talking Nerdy Radio Theater. As discussed on our previous episode, episode 150, um, we talked about the term gaslighting and what that means today. And one thing the good Reverend, um, the Reverend Tracy, happened to bring up was that the term actually comes from a movie, um, actually a stage play that was turned into a movie called Gaslight. Um, and what I ended up uh, finding out on my own was that this movie, uh, similar to other movies in that era, um, was uh, essentially adapted into a radio play. So um, what we're going to present to you right now, thanks to the fact that this is in the public domain, uh, we're going to present to you Gaslight, as brought to you from the Screen Guild Theater. Um, I don't recall uh, what official state, I don't know if this is like an NBC mutual broadcasting system type of a, a show or whatnot, but um, it does star Charles Boyer and Susan Hayward. In the film, uh, Ingrid Bergman um, pl- played that original character. So um, take some time, kick back, and enjoy Gaslight. <laughs> Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild Players. The Lady Esther Screen Guild play tonight, Gaslight. The starring players, this is Charles Guayin. And this is Susan Hayward. Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in Metro-Golden-Mayer's shocking and brutal study of murder and intrigue, Gaslight. It stars Charles Boy as Gregory and Susan Hayward as Paula. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Gaslight. Number nine, Thornton Square. A house in London. A house filled with many memories for me. With the echoes of music and laughter and happiness. And something else. With fear. Black, choking fear that I shall never forget. Number nine, Thornton Square. I hadn't seen it for years. Since I was 14. Since they sent me to Italy to live and study music. And forget the awful thing that had happened. It was taken for granted I should prepare for the opera. But I knew I'd never sing like Aunt Alice. Her voice had been one in a generation. Still, I might have gone on working and hoping. If my teacher hadn't hired a new accompanist, his eyes were dark and his voice was soft. Within two days, I was in love, and within two weeks, I was married. Paula, Paula, wake up. Come and look at the morning. It's much too lovely to sleep. I'm not asleep. I'm dreaming, but I'm not asleep. May I ask, what are you dreaming about? You and me, our life together, a lovely life, and every day starting with a morning like this. With the sun rising, lighting your hair as it does now. Ah, poor life, I can only capture it all in my music. You will, darling. I know your concerto will be great and wonderful. When will you start on it, Gregory? Oh, one day, when we've had our honeymoon and settle down in a home of our own somewhere. Where? Where would you like us to settle? I haven't thought. Paris, perhaps. Paris? A home? How would you feel about London? London? (laughs) Paula, if you'll promise not to laugh at me. Of course I'll not laugh. What is it, darling? Oh, it's an idea, an idea that's been with me for years. I was in London once in the winter. I used to look at those quiet houses in the little London squares and long for a home like that with a woman I loved. Could we settle down in London? Not in a house in a square, perhaps, but... Uh, Paula, why do you look like that? Because there is a house in a square. What house? 
9 Thornton Square. She left it to me. Oh, you mean Alice Alquist, your aunt? My mother died when I was born. I never knew anything about her or my father. I always lived with Aunt Alice. Then, after it happened, I never went back. But that house has been in my dreams for years. Oh, my dear. It's strange, though. I haven't dreamed of it since I've known you. I haven't been afraid since I've known you. Oh, Paula, if that is true, it makes me very happy. It is true. I'm not afraid anymore. I could even face that house with you. Oh, no, no, Paula, beloved. I wouldn't ask it. Yes, you shall have your dream, Gregory. You shall have your house in the square. Nine Thornton Square. The front door creaking open after ten long years. The windows all boarded up. The furniture under dust sheets like bulky ghosts. I was almost afraid to go in, but Gregory... Come, come, Paula. I don't stand there in the doorway. Gregory, will you light the gas, please? Mm, oh, of course. I hope the agent remembered to have it turned on. Yes, there we are. Oh, Gregory, to see it all like this. I remember this room full of flowers and light and people, and, and now it's all dead. It even smells of death. No, it only smells of dust. We'll get the windows opened. It will soon be fresh again. Oh, Paula... What a lovely cabinet. That's where she kept all the little treasures. The things she collected on her tours around the world. The glass is broken. Yes, I know. It was broken that night. The things were all disarranged, but there was nothing missing. I knew everything in this case by heart. This fan. Oh, careful, dears. Verdi gave her this fan. She carried it in Traviata. And this glove. She wore it in Romeo and Juliet. And afterwards, Guno signed it for her. See? I never knew what happened to the other glove. I used to ask her sometimes, and she'd only laugh and say that she'd given it away to a very great admirer. She'd never tell me. I wish I could have seen her. Let me show her to you. Here, help me take the dust sheet off. This was her favorite painting. Oh, what a magnificent costume. That's as the Empress Theodora, her greatest role. When she sang it in St. Petersburg, the Tsar used to come to every performance. She was very beautiful, very like you. I... Found her there, beneath the portrait, in front of the fire. I was in bed, and something woke me. I came running down the stairs, frightened, as if I knew what had happened. Oh, Paula. She'd been strangled. Her lovely face, all... Oh, oh, darling, please, you mustn't do this to yourself. It's these things, Paula. They remind you of her, so... We'll put them away, and you'll see. This house will be happy again. Oh, I hope so. I hope so, Gregory. Where can we put them, Paula? Well... There's an attic under the roof. Her trunks are all up there, all her costumes. Well, then we'll put them in the attic and board it up. Everything, the painting, the furniture, the piano. Oh, not the piano. You'll need it to work. Though it must be horribly out of tune. <laughs> Shall we see? Yes, yes, it is. What makes you play that? Why not? That was her great song. She always used it for an encore in all her concerts. Oh, I suppose I must have heard of it. Of course. Oh, look, dear. Here's some of her music. The score of Theodora, just as she left it. And here's a letter. Dear Miss Alquist, I beg of you to see me just once more. I followed you to London to... Gregory, it's dated March 23rd. That was two days before she was... Where did you find that? In this score. She must have left it there. It signed Sir Gay Bauer. I don't remember any... Give it to me! Oh, Gregory, what is it? Why should this letter upset you so? Get... I'm sorry, Paula. I'm upset for you. All these things reminding you of her. You said that you had lost your fears and everything you touch here brings them back. Oh, oh my dearest. Who are you afraid of anything? There cannot be any happiness for us. Forget her, Paula. Promise me. Of course, dear. If you ask it, I promise. <laughs> Gregory, I'm so happy. What a wonderful idea to go for a walk. Well, it's been weeks since I've been out of the house. Well, the weather hasn't been very nice. I know, but well, sometimes it does get a little lonesome with you going off to your studio every night. Darling, I'm working on my concerto. I can work here. I know. But if we could just have some people in. Not a party, nothing like that. Paula, I thought we were still on our honeymoon. Oh, of course, of course we are. Paula, do you remember what day this is? How could I forget? Three months ago today. Yes, the three happiest months of my life. 
I have a present for you, Paula. Look. A cameo brooch. Gregory, where did you find anything so beautiful? It belonged to my mother, and before that to her mother. Now it belongs to you. I shall wear it always. Please, pin it on for me. No, I'm afraid the pin is not very strong. Perhaps you'd better not wear it till I have it mended. But, Gregory, I... You might lose it. You know, you are inclined to lose things, Paula. I am? I never realized it. (laughs) Just little things. I'll put this in your bag for safekeeping. Now, you'll remember where it is. Don't be silly. Of course I'll remember. I was teasing you, my dear. Let's go for our walk. I know just the walk, Gregory. When we leave the square, we turn right and... Oh, good afternoon. I... I'm so sorry. Who was that, Buller? I don't know. He started to lift his hat and I thought... Do you usually speak to people you don't know? No. I thought perhaps I might have met him somewhere. It really doesn't matter. Darling, here's where we turn. If we walk straight north, it's the loveliest view. Like seeing a ghost. I could have sworn that... Good afternoon, Inspector. Inspector Cameron? Oh, hello, Williams. Are you on duty here? Yes, sir. No trouble, I hope, sir. None that I know of. Williams, did you see that man and woman just turn the corner? Yes, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Gregory Anton. Live here in the square, sir. Number nine. Number nine? Wasn't that where Alice Alves... Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Anton's her niece, sir. Come back here to live. Very quiet, sir. No guests. And Mrs. Hartley leaves the house. If you're well informed, they must have a good cook. <laughs> Elizabeth, sir. Middle-aged, rather dead. And the parlourmaid? Oh, Nancy, sir. Young and pretty. <laughs> On the saucy side. Williams, you're not married, are you? No, sir. Not yet, sir. I want to know some more about that house, and you'll oblige me if you stay single for a while. Yes, sir. Anything for Scotland Yard, sir. Good day. <laughs> Gregory, why did we have to come back so soon? I could have walked and walked. It is better not to overdo it, Paula. Not until you're quite yourself again. But I am myself. What did you mean? Mm, Nothing important. But you have been acting rather strangely. I have? Well, speaking to people you don't know and forgetting things. Really, you've been quite forgetful lately. Forgetful? You know, losing things. (laughs) Oh, it's nothing. You just get overtired. Yes, I... I suppose I do. Why don't you lie down and get some rest? I thought I would go over to my studio. The concerto is getting to the point where... Darling, you don't mind, do you? Of course not. Then I'll go along. Oh, uh, Paula, uh, you might give me your brooch. I'll leave it to be repaired. Yes, I'll get it out of my purse. But, darling, tell them not to keep it too long. I can hardly wait till I... Yes, Paula? Paula, what's wrong? Gregory... I don't understand it. The brooch is gone. It's sheer nonsense, Cameron. The Alpha's case has been closed for ten years. And just because you see a woman who resembles her slightly... Not slightly, sir. She's the image of her aunt. That's got nothing to do with it. The case is over and done with. No clues, no suspects. And as far as the jewels are concerned, we... Jewels? There's nothing in the files about any jewels, sir. Mm, well, there were some jewels given her by... Uh, well, by someone very highly placed. Some of the crown jewels of his, uh... Well, now, it seems they were infatuated with each other. Sort of romance. Morganatic marriage, I believe. Very secret. Yes, but what happened to the jewels? He, uh, never knew. We, uh... <clears throat> there were instructions to drop that part of the case. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, take my advice and forget the whole thing. Forget you ever saw this Mrs. Anton. That's rather difficult, sir, since I expect to see her tomorrow night... Uh, Lady Dalroy's music hour. Lady Dalroy? How did she happen to invite Mrs. Anton? Very simple, sir. I asked her to. Gregory, wasn't it sweet of Lady Dalroy to remember me? How could anyone forget you, dear? But I was only 14. Oh, darling, we'll have a wonderful time. Of course we will. I'll wear my new dress and put my hair up and... Gregory, what's the matter? Oh, Paula... What is it, Gregory? What is it? You you mean you don't know? No. Look. At the wall. Yes. The little picture's been taken down again. Who took it down? Why was it taken down? Why, indeed. 
Why was it taken down before? Will you please get it from wherever you've hidden it and put it back in its place? But I haven't hidden it. I swear I haven't. I'll swear on the Bible. Go and find that picture. Perhaps behind the large chair. Sometimes. Yes. Here it is. So, you knew where it was all the time? No, I didn't know. I only looked there because that's where it was found twice before. I didn't know, Gregory. I didn't know. I think you'd better go to your room. Perhaps a few days in bed. But Lady Dalroy's musicale. It's tomorrow night. I've been looking forward oh, to it. Oh, my dear, you're far from well enough to go to the musicale. I'll send it to Dalroy our regrets. Second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. Have you ever worn an unbecoming hat and hated it, but didn't know just why? Then suddenly you found the right hat, one that brought out all the good points of your face, and instantly it transformed your whole appearance. Well, you might make just as wonderful a difference in the appearance of your skin if you do one simple thing. Here it is. Skin specialists know that many women who think they give their skin good care never get it really clean. They don't realize there's a stubborn film on every woman's skin caused by natural oils mixed with cosmetics and dirt. You can't see or feel the stubborn film, and ordinary cleansing fails to remove it. You think your skin is clean when it isn't. Day after day, this invisible film clings, hiding the true freshness and beauty of your skin, Encouraging blackheads and blemishes. Here's the safe, sure way to remove that stubborn film. Smooth on my unique Lady Esther face cream and wipe it off. Immediately, and this is so important, apply Lady Esther cream again and wipe it off. The second cleansing with Lady Esther gets rid of that stubborn, clogging film. Now your skin is really clean. And instantly you see the difference. The clearer, fresher, younger look you feel the new softness and smoothness. The very texture of My Lady Esther Cream is unique, so soft, so effective. That's one reason why my cream cleanses so thoroughly. If you want compliments tomorrow, remove that stubborn film tonight. Now, Lady Esther presents the second act of Gaslight, starring Susan Hayward and Charles Boyer. Number nine, Fulton Square. From that day on, the house was filled with a nameless terror. Little things, a handkerchief lost, a book misplaced... Things I couldn't explain or account for. Things that made my days a despair. And the nights when Gregory was away. A horror. Did you ring for me, Mum? Elizabeth, did you... Did you turn on the gas anywhere just now? No, Mum. I haven't touched it for hours. Is there any trouble, Mum? I... Here in my room, it, it seemed to dim for a moment. Well, uh, the pipes might be stopped up a bit, perhaps. Yes. Yes, that would explain it, wouldn't it? <laughs> Elizabeth. Elizabeth, don't you hear it? Hear what, Mum? Those sounds, those noises up there. Listen. There are sounds up there, aren't there? Like someone moving about. Please, Elizabeth, tell me you hear them. Well, Mum, the truth is I don't. But then my hearing's not very good, you know. No, that's right. You don't hear well at all, do you? Gregory. Gregory, please, I've got to get out of here. I've got to be with people, talk to people. Gregory, I'm afraid. Afraid? You never told me that before. I'm telling you now. I'm afraid of this house. I hear noises, footsteps. I imagine all sorts of things when you're not here. Yes, yes, I was afraid it would come to that. To what? Gregory, are you trying to tell me that I'm insane? It's what I'm trying not to tell myself. But it's what you think, isn't it? 
It's what you've been hinting and, and suggesting for months now. Ever since... Since what? Since the day I lost your brooch. That's when it began. No, it began before that. The first day here, the day I found that letter. Yes. Yes, I remember. I can still see you standing there and saying, Look, look at this letter. And staring at nothing. At nothing? You had nothing in your hands. But, but... Now perhaps you will understand why I cannot let you meet people. Gregory. I've been thinking about it. Possibly I'm wrong to try to handle this myself. The case is one for people who are trained for such things. Paula, we shall have visitors. And shortly. A doctor? Two. Yes, I think that two is the required number. Same thing tonight, Williams. You're sure he followed the same route? Quite sure, Inspector. I was back at the post. He didn't see me as he went by. Came out of number nine, walked down the street, turned in at the alley, went round the back, and in through the rear of number five. Number five? It's empty, sir. Ah, and from number five, he could go across the roof to number nine, couldn't he? But that's his own house, sir. Why should he come out the front door and go to all that trouble to get back by way of the attic? I don't know why, Williams, but I'm going to find out. Diego, don't let the gas go down again. Please, don't let it. No, no, make it go up again. Make it go up. Mrs. Anton, Mrs. Anton, Mum. Yes, Elizabeth? Uh, Mrs. Anton, there's someone here. I tried to tell him, but he wouldn't... It's quite all right. I'll explain it myself. Mrs. Anton. No, he isn't here. My husband isn't home. I know, Mrs. Anton. It's you I want to see. You... You're the man who... Well, I won't go with you. You can't make me go. Mrs. Anton, I want to show you something. Look at it, please. A white glove? Now read the inscription on it. To Brian Cameron, my greatest admirer, from Alice Alquist. It's the other glove from the case. She... She gave it to you? I was 12 then and infatuated. Now will you trust me? Yes, I... Is there anyone in the house besides us and Elizabeth? No. Why? Well, the gas just went down. I thought perhaps... The gas? You saw it too? Of course. Then it really happens. I don't just imagine it. Imagine it? The gas dimming down and the sounds in the attic. Every night when my husband goes out, I thought... Wait. Listen. Are those the sounds you mean from up there? Yes, yes, yes. Mrs. Anson, what's up there in the attic? All my aunt's things. Her clothes and stage costumes and trunks and furniture. But the door's boarded up. You can't open the door. There may be other ways. But who? You know, don't you? You know who's up there. Oh, no. No. He'll be coming back soon. Does he have a gun? In his room, in the desk. We'll have to hurry. Come along. <laughs> Nothing here. A pistol case, but it's empty. The chances are he's... Mrs. Anson, what is it? This. This letter. It was here in the drawer. I was right. There was a letter. And it was from Sir Gay Bauer. Sir Gay Bauer? I know that name. Yes, he was a young pianist played for Alice Alquist in Prague. Let me see that letter. Dear Miss Alquist, I beg of you to see me just once more. I followed you to London to... Mrs. Anton, I have a letter, too. Here, have a look at it. Dear Lady Dalroy, I'm sorry that my dear wife's health is... Where did you get this? From Lady Dalroy. My, my husband wrote this. He... Yes, I know. He also wrote this letter from Sergei Bauer. The writing is identical. But he said there wasn't any letter. He said I was going out of my mind. No, you weren't going out of your mind. You were slowly and systematically being driven out of your mind. But why? Why? Perhaps because you found this letter and know too much. Or because he wanted you out of the way so he could search the house as he wished. Search? Search for what? For the jewels for which Alice Alquist was murdered. But nothing was taken. I have her jewels. There were others. Jewels you didn't know she had. The jewels he must have been looking for that night when Alice Alquist found him downstairs. Oh, no. No. Yes, I'm afraid he planned this whole thing. Finding you in Italy, your marriage, bringing you back here. Hola. What is this? Gregory. 
And you, sir? What are you doing in my room? I don't think it will need much explanation, Mr. Bauer. Bauer? Yes, Scotland Yard's been rather puzzled these last ten years. It seems... If you think you can kick me... No, you don't. Uh, Williams, Williams, are you still waiting? Right here, Inspector. Well, you're hardly any use down there. Come along and truss him up. Gregory? Paula. Paula. Mr. Cameron said you asked to see me. Paula, if I could only put my arms around you once more, if I were not tied like this. Mr. Cameron said the jewels were in your pocket, Gregory. You must have found them just tonight. No, 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 Paula, it's not true. He's lying to you. Why should he lie to me? But because, Paula, Paula, do you remember our first days? Do you remember Italy? Yes, I remember Italy. One of the most beautiful days in your life and mine. Paula, we're going to have those days again. Come closer, Paula. Closer. Look into my eyes. If I ever meant anything to you, and I know I did, then help me, Paula. Give me another chance. Paula, in the drawer of that cupboard, there is a knife. Get it and cut me free. Will you do it, Paula? Will you set me free? Yes, I'll get it. I'll get it for you. The left-hand drawer. No, no, not that one. Don't touch that drawer. Why not? Why shouldn't I? Fear, please, Paula, please. That's strange. My brooch is here. What? The brooch I lost. And a handkerchief no. I couldn't find. And my watch that I misplaced. Paula, Paula, get the knife. Never mind these things now. But, Gregory, dear, I don't understand. Someone put eh? them here. But who? Oh, you must have put them there yourself. Oh, no. I've never opened this closet. Unless, unless I've forgotten. Yes, yes, that's it. You forgot. Paula, now get the knife. Oh, yes, the knife. The other drawer, you said. That's it, Paula. That's the one. Oh, I'm sorry. There isn't any knife here. Huh? But there is. You have it in your hand. A knife? In my hand? Yes. Yes, you, you're holding it. Can't you see it, Paula? Oh, Gregory, I'm so sorry. I must have lost the knife as I lost those other things. And now you're going to be angry, aren't you? No, 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 Paula, Paula, you wouldn't. It's really too bad, isn't it, Gregory? If I had that knife, I could cut you free. Paula. But since I haven't any knife, they'll come in and get you. No. They'll take you away. No. And you'll hang, Gregory. You'll hang just because I couldn't find the knife. No, no, you can't, you can't. Mr. Cameron. Yes, Mrs. Anton. Mr. Bauer and I have nothing further to say to each other. Will you take him now? Thank you, Charles Boy and Susan Hayward, for an absorbing story. Believe me, we shall all remember your performances for a long time. Well, Mr. Bradley, we won't forget being here tonight either. An appearance with the Lady Esther Screen Guild players is always one of the highlights of the year for us. <clears throat> because we all know... <clears throat> excuse me. The magnificent work... I'm sorry. I... Would you... Ladies and gentlemen, we wish to thank Mr. Boyer and Susan Hayward for appearing here through the courtesy of the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Now, before we tell you about next week's show, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. If you eat something that doesn't agree with you, nature warns you by causing pain. And then you say, I'll never eat that again. Now, what's true about food is true about skin care. If what you're now using leaves your skin feeling dry, do you think your skin care is right? Nature is warning you there's something wrong. Why risk something which doesn't agree with your skin? Instead, use my safe, gentle Lady Esther cream. See the difference. See how my unique cream leaves your skin so much softer, smoother, the first time you use it. The very texture of my Lady Esther cream is unique, specially designed to soften while it cleanses. And here's something else which will help enormously to guard against dry skin. Use Lady Esther cream as a powder base, as well as for cleansing. Let it help protect your skin all day long. Remember, my unique Lady Esther cream is not just a cleansing cream. It's a for-purpose cream. It does four of the things your skin needs most. Cleanses thoroughly, softens your skin, 
helps nature refine your pores and makes a perfect powder base. My cream needs no help from any other cream. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Heavenly Days. It will star Fibber McGee and Molly. Be sure to listen. Gaslight was produced and directed for Lady Esther by Bill Lawrence, adapted by Harry Cronman, and was presented by Arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Lady in the Lake, starring Robert Montgomery, Audrey Totter, and Lloyd Nolan. Tonight's play was based on the Broadway stage play Angel Street by Patrick Hamilton, produced and directed by Shepard Trowell. Charles Boyer is soon to be seen in the Enterprise production, Arch of Triumph. Susan Hayward will soon be seen in the Walter Wanger production, Smash Up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you would be curious to know that Miss Hayward has been suffering from a cold and she had a slight indisposition. I'm glad you'd like to know. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Subscribe to Friends Talking Nerdy on iTunes, the Google Play Music Store, as well as Spotify. Remember to support Friends Talking Nerdy on Patreon. Goodbye, darling.